Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. This is the Wee Knives Blue, which uh, is, <laughs> this particular version is very colorful and all over the place, but they have a few different versions of this knife. In fact, they have very simple versions that are just, you know, stonewashed titanium with micarta and a stonewashed blade, right? So if this is a little too much color for you, uh, they do have more simple versions. They also have versions that are way crazier than this. Uh, <laughs> it's typical Wii. They're all over the place, varying price ranges. I'm going to link these right down below so you guys can check them out if you want to. It does help my channel when you use my links, but that's up to you. Thanks so much to Wii Knives for sending this in for me to take a look at. Uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex and thanks to my patrons for supporting me. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of this knife overall. Coming in at uh, about 7.75. Yeah, maybe just a hair shine. Nope, 7.75 inches. Blade length is coming in at about three and a quarter. Cutting edge is coming in, yeah, three and an eighth, something like that. How about some size comparisons? Up against the Ontario Rat Model 1, and the Ontario Rad Model 2, there we go. How about up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3? It's really, it's, it looks closer to the Para 3, it just feels, it feels a lot bigger. I think it's just the ergonomic lines. And then last but not least, the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. And well, let's do the 8020.5. It's very similar to the 8020.5 in overall size. And then finally, the Benchmade bug out. There we go. How's the action on this guy? This is almost primarily a front flipper. You can see there, you can get it to deploy, or I'm sorry, drop safely to your thumb. You just have to be very, you got to really make sure your finger is up there, ready to be caught by the sharpening choil and not the blade, right? Because I think in some situations, it might split your fingernail. It is almost primarily a front flipper. You can just, I can just barely dig my fingernail in there and get into this. Now, the nice thing is, is for a front flipper, my thing with front flippers is they're fine. Um, I don't like them as a, you know, like a solitary means of deployment. I, I like there to be a secondary, like a thumb stud or a flipper tab or something, right? But this is done very well. In fact, this is done so well that I can actually do it with the side of my index finger. It really is an insanely easy front flipper to manipulate. Left-handed, even doing the index finger left-handed, no problem. And the detent is nice. They really have that dialed in on this thing, and there's enough handle room here. And the other thing that I like is that while this is a frame lock, a lot of the frame is actually tucked underneath the, uh, the carbon fiber here. So you're really not you know, having to worry too much about where to put your fingers while you're front flipping in, right? So if you want to, you can force the reverse flick. It's not comfortable and there's a good chance you'll throw the knife. So, you know, if you don't like knives that are dedicated front flippers, this might not be for you, but at least it's done very, very well. And honestly, the action is very good. It's actually not quite as tight as a lot of the Wii's that I handle. <laughs> Moving on, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and do carry profile. Um, thickness up against the Spyderco uh, Para 3, it's actually a little bit thinner. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. Um, you can see here that uh, this guy is really about the same overall length as the Para 3. Sorry, earthquake, I guess. Um, it maybe a little bit with the flipper tab here. Nowhere near as tall, nowhere near as long as the PM2, nowhere near as tall as either. Even the fattest end down here is still not quite reaching that hump in the pair of three. Let's do a hardware check. I'll get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use in this channel. You'll notice here that we have, you know, the pivot, which is a T8, and then we have one screw over here. Um, I'm going to guess that there's something underneath here, right? In fact, we probably, I wonder if we're, we would be able to take that out by removing one screw. Should we try? I think maybe it's worth a look. I'd like to see if this inlay comes out. And if it does, I'd like to see what is underneath. 
There's this. It might be that we cannot get to this without removing the pivot. Yeah, I bet that pivot is lipped over. And it's, <laughs> what's also weird, I think we have to take this off and then we have to allow the pivot barrel to come out because there is a hidden screw underneath. Oh no, it's wanting to, the whole thing is wanting to lift. So there you go. That's what it looks like underneath. There is another screw, right? And it, it is actually a T8. But a lot of the hardware, right? And I mean, this is still minimal, which is, that's impressive. This is weird. The pocket clip, so this, okay, so this screw goes all the way through and into the pocket clip. I was like, why is the pocket clip attached to the, <laughs> to the scale? That doesn't seem very durable. Um, no, it, uh, it, it does, this screw goes all the way through. They're hiding a lot of this hardware, which is honestly pretty cool. Um, that's kind of, um, you're not, there's no utilitarian benefit to this, but it does look nice and it is a little bit more expensive to do. And it's a little bit more tricky, you know, from, you know, I, I guess an engineering standpoint, right? Or designing perspective. I don't know. I appreciate it. I think it's neat. Those are the types of things that I like to see when I'm taking knives apart. It's just interesting. I'm really, I'm really, um, you know, uh, kind of impressed at how easy that was. Um, it really came apart very, very easily. Are we still looking at the same? I think I got it a little bit too tight. I think maybe we can back that pivot off just a little bit. Yeah, let's see if we are still. Oh yeah, we're good. That's the centering. Yeah, we're good. So there you go. Don't usually take that much of a detailed look during the, you know, the hardware check, but that's kind of neat. I, I really appreciate that. I think this will be a pretty darn easy knife to disassemble. The way that it's done, I think people will really appreciate it. Okay, wait, what are we looking at for materials? In this case, we have purple anodized titanium. We don't see that a lot. Uh, we have some, it looks like fat shred. I, th I don't know if it's fat carbon. And it's just kind of the shred style, right? Looks good. And then we have a, in this case, a two-tone M390 blade, which by the way, was an OSAP Hell design. Uh, weight is coming in at, hang on, here we go. 4.06 ounces, um, not uh, perfect ratios, but also not horribly heavy. I think most people will be able to deal with it just fine. If you're used to carrying the Benchmade mini bug out, this might feel like a tank in your pocket. I think to most people, it's really not gonna be that big of a deal. All right, meat and potatoes time. I gotta be honest with you, when I opened this thing up, I was just like, wow, there's a lot going on here. Um, <laughs> it's two-tone and purple, and it's called the blue, and and then I got to you know manipulating it, and that's when I discovered, this actually makes a great front, uh, front flipper. It's also very ergonomic. This is, uh, this is really, really nice in the hand. Um, I, um, I don't have too many complaints about this ergonomically. You've got a nice choke up point. The jimping is extended. The pocket clip, which is, you know, a 3D milled clip and not a stamped clip, nicely knocked down all the way around. It's just really nice. Manipulation is very easy, very friendly, right? Um, and uh, I don't know, I just appreciate this a lot more than I thought. You can get real close to the edge without feeling like you're accidentally gonna slip, right? Pretty nice. Easy to disengage too, thanks to an enlarged scallop right there for your thumb. Yeah, um, I just would have preferred, you know, for me, not the real intense purple, right? That's gonna be fine for some people. Uh, some people are gonna like that, but it's a preference, right? I think the OD Green Micarta with stonewashed tie and the stonewashed blade, I thought that was a good looking setup. The blade itself, we have these this area that's cut out here and it's divided by this little hourglass piece of steel there. Um, there's a flat that carries out about, I don't know, 70% the length of the blade. Big swedge right here. I think it would have been nice. I mean, I understand where they were going with this, like they're following this sort of line right here. Um, it would have been nice if this area was closer out here. It, they Excuse me, I thought I was gonna sneeze. They accommodated for this swedge right here, but I think if this was higher, and maybe if the handle was cut a little bit lower, we would have been able to engage with that little slot right there a little bit better, but we can't, it's really not that big of a deal. Geometry down to the edge is okay. It's not super duper thin, but it's also not what I would define as thick, right? It will slice, it will cut, comes out to a nice tip out here. Not a super durable tip. Don't be doing anything stupid with your knife. Puncture tasks, right? If you're trying to puncture something that is softer than the blade steel, you'll probably be okay, right? 
Don't pry with it. Don't hammer with the tip. Don't screw with the tip, right? Uh, slicing, right? Again, don't cut things like rebar or nails or staples. Cut things that knives are supposed to cut and you'll be all right. Uh, overall execution, typical Wii. Very, very good. Mm, there's usually, it's very rare to see a manufacturing flaw. D in terms of like design wonkiness, right? And people put lines in places that, you know, aren't natural. Okay, that's one thing, right? This knife doesn't really have it. But when we're talking about execution materials and fitment of everything, right? The fit and finish is very, very good. Typical Wii, right? Essentially flawless. Um, I like the lines for the inlay, right? This is a big uh, piece of inlay material and they have intentionally lipped it. You can see that it is, it's not like, oh, it's sticking up higher. It's not supposed to do, no, it's the same distance all the way around. They have done that intentionally and it is the same thing on this side. I keep seeing these little areas that look like scratches and I'm realizing it's because the anodized part is actually tumbled, right? So those are supposed to be there. I think I saw some down here, there's a couple right there. And then also there's some up here. And I'm realized, at first I was like, oh God, did I drop this thing? No, you can see it right there too. Those little marks are actually coming through, not anodized. So you can see the tumble marks in there, which was also clearly intentional, right? Looks fine. We have a backspacer here. This appears to be titanium. We, of course, doing an excellent job by, um, <laughs> omitting the lanyard hole completely and opting for a lanyard bar, which is a way better design. And then we get this beautiful, look at this, this beautiful 3D milled clip gets its own space, its own optimized space. And this, this area is completely and totally unsullied by the butthole that is the lanyard hole, right? Uh, we don't need those there. They can be back here, right? The lanyard folks can still attach lanyards and the rest of us, the other 99.9999% of us who don't give a crap about the lanyard hole and don't use lanyards can just enjoy the positioning of the clip and the aesthetics of the clip. This is a kind of a medium. It's not super deep carry, not shallow carry. That's fine. In and out of the pocket, very easy thanks to a good ramp and a smooth surface. My carta might be a little bit tougher. Again, this is great. Most of the frame lock is sucked underneath, I say sucked, inset or laid underneath the uh, overlay there. That's really good. If we're gonna do a frame lock, I think nowadays it's just better to not have exposed frame locks, right? Either do a liner lock or do a frame lock with a big wide inlay or overlay that covers it. This is great for not only ease of manipulation, but also when you're squeezing down on this thing, we don't wanna, I don't like to, to mash the lock bar into the tank. I don't like doing that because then it gets stuck and it messes with the geometry and it can create early lock rock, which, you know, people say, oh, you're, you're, you're holding the lock in place while you're using it. Yeah, but if you do that over, you know, really a short period of time and you, you just keep grinding down that surface area of the lock bar, or in this case, the steel lock bar insert, Eventually it wears over so far the thing starts to rock and then it makes it easier for the blade to disengage I I think it's better to just have it naturally engaged from the start with good Geometry that allows it to stay locked under normal circumstances and normal circumstances do not include Pounding the blade through a log because you just don't have anything else to baton with I don't believe you right so um, Yeah, this is a better setup. It just uh it just makes more sense. Stop pin is actually attached to the blade, which means it's riding on channels on either side of the titanium. I love this because we get an additional point of contact over a traditional stop pin, where it's just a single point of contact, tang to pin, right? In this case, we have pin to frame and pin to frame and lock face, right? Which is three versus lock face and pin to tang. Um, so that's good. What does that do? Allows good solidity and lockup while maintaining a smooth action, usually. In the case of Wii, definitely. No blade play up, down, left, or right. No lock stick. No pivot lash. Consistent action. Reasonable detents about medium. So that's what it should be for a front flipper. And uh, perfect centering. Okay, uh, yeah, I like this a lot more than I thought I would. It just looks so weird, right? Um, and I think it's mainly the purple and the two-tone. Uh, the standard version that I have, I think, looks much 
you know, much more plain. It's impressive the construction, a lot of the hardware is being hidden, you know. Um, I, I love the ergonomic lines. Blade is simple, right? Um, it's good. It's it's still pretty pricey. These are coming in base. Like the one you're looking at here is 300 bucks. And if you're new to the knife world, that's going to be this big, crazy shock. Oh my gosh, how can a knife that's purple and looks kind of gas station-y cost so much money? Because the colors are not indicative of the... <laughs> the, the the price range, right? It's just a color. Um, but uh, yeah, in terms of what where we normally sit, these are premium. They are Chinese made, but they are premium knives, right? Premium materials, more importantly, premium execution. And in this case, well thought out design. Um, 300 bucks for this guy, $279 for the entry price on the standard version, which is all right. I think I would have been much more comfortable at under $250 on this thing. Uh, you know, I would have been um, blown away at uh, under $220. Um, but uh, yeah, Wii's up there. You know, they just, they, they're they just like 30 to 50 higher than what it seems like where they should be, you know. Uh, unfortunately for Wii, there are companies doing exactly this for sometimes... Seriously, in some cases, $100 less. This is nice, and the nice thing about Wii is that they are consistent. You can trust that the quality is going to be consistent. They have been doing this for a very long time. They make a lot of knives, and they're generally going to get things right. In fact, I don't think I've ever had a Wii knife that was wonky, right? Um, so, yeah, you're, you're going to get consistency, and you're going to get what you expect. $279 is a lot. I can't say that it makes me want to recommend this knife to everybody, but if you like how this looks, honestly, this was a little bit of a sleeper for me. I just didn't expect it to be a cool knife. It just doesn't, it doesn't scream special to me initially, right? And then I got it, and I messed around with it and thought... That's kind of neat. And I wasn't expecting, you know, the construction elements. It was actually a lot easier to take apart than I thought. And I learned that during the video. Um, so, yeah, it's neat. If you like how it looks, go for it. It's just the price, like a lot of Wii knives, is just, eh, it's not doing enough, right? Well, give us an example of enough. The Wii Vision R. There's an example of something I'm like, there's something cool, something weird, something different, right? Has all the elements that we want in a premium knife, but it's got an interesting lock. Yes, it was, you know... It's one of those, it's not an in-house design, right? But neither is this, it's Zostep Hell. So um, that's kind of where I am willing to spend more money. Stuff like this, I like to see it well under 250 bucks, right? Still cool, and if you like it, I think you're going to be happy with it. Not something I'm, you know, that, I, that you need to rush out and buy right now. I'll link it down below if you guys want to check it out anyway. Thanks again to Wee for sending this in for review. That's going to be pretty much it today. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.